Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is your boy Fitzwong TV here, aka Lauren33. I'm back here today with another video on the channel for you guys. And today we're gonna be talking about Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 76. We have a full translated summary from the homie DBS Chronicles on Twitter. So I want to say thank you to him as we get started. We don't have any spoiler images yet for the chapter. I expect we will be getting those during this weekend, right? Because VJump links, uh, VJump leaks uh, start coming out the 16th, which is today when I'm recording this video. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I expect that we will be getting spoiler images for the chapter as the weekend goes on. And the manga chapter drops very early next week. It's either Monday or Tuesday. So of course, as we always do, I will have a full review and reaction when we get the full chapter early next week. But we're going to talk about the summary uh, really quick. And this summary, there's some very, 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 very huge revelations here. Huge revelations. So this is your one and only spoiler warning before we get into the manga chapter. Man, you know, and I know I think this is going to be a very controversial chapter, too, because... Depending on if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Minus or a fan of the Bardock special, you're going to have different feelings about some of the revelations in this chapter, right? If you guys couldn't tell from the title itself in the thumbnail. But either way, I'm very excited to get into these, you know. So without wasting any more time, sit back, relax, and let's get into Dragon Ball Super Manga Chapter 76 summary. So, uh, like I said... Uh, so the first pages of the chapter are those that we saw in the early, uh, draft pages, of course, right? Where we see Granola after, you know, awakening, awakening, right? His self, remember we saw him do that at the end of chapter 75, where his other eye, uh, turned red. I've been calling it Super Granola or Super Cerulean Granola, whatever you want to call it. We don't have an official name for this new state that Granola's in, but uh, we know that he has awakened and he's much more powerful than he was before. But uh, we saw Granola, he's attacking Vegeta to the point where he loses his Ultra Ego form. And then right when Granola's about to finish him off, Goku appears using Super Saiyan Blue. And he hits Granola in the face, sending him away from Vegeta. And that's where the early draft pages ended. So everything that, that we're about to go over from here on out is new stuff, okay? All right, so Goku tells Vegeta now that he will take care of Granola, but Vegeta doesn't accept it, and he kicks Goku in his side, in his side, sending him flying against a drum of water. Vegeta approaches Goku and tells him, "Don't interfere," and then punches Goku in the face. So Vegeta here, I thought Vegeta was kind of over this, you know, this stage. Because remember, we saw Vegeta do something similar to Goku during Resurrection F when Goku was fighting Frieza. Vegeta got jealous and, you know, he wanted his turn to fight. And then he attacked Goku from behind, which was actually the first damage that Goku had taken in that battle up to that point. So Vegeta could have simply just told Goku, you know, like, you know, uh, don't interfere. But instead, he wants to get all violent. And remember, Goku's already injured. You know, Goku, the only reason why he's back on his feet is because he actually healed himself. You know, but Vegeta's always going to be Vegeta, right? His pride's always going to get in the way. So, uh, so after punching Goku in the face, they're arguing. And then we see Granola, who has recovered from Goku's sneak attack. Granola approaches Vegeta and tries to pierce his abdomen with the palm of his head, or the palm of his hand, right? Let me know that Vegeta, that, you know, that's been a targeted area from Granola since him and Vegeta started fighting a couple chapters back. But we see Goku, Goku reacts on time, and it doesn't tell us if Goku's in Ultra Instinct. I'm just going to assume that he's still in his Super Saiyan Blue form, just because uh, if Goku was in Ultra Instinct, it probably would have said that he transformed. But Goku reacts on time and pushes Vegeta with a shockwave. Granola only manages, manages to scratch Vegeta a bit because Goku uh, was able to push Vegeta back. Goku, I mean, Vegeta crashes into a house, and it looks like he's unconscious. So now Goku and Granola are fighting. So we're not really getting the Goku and Vegeta team up we expected to get, right? A lot of you guys were expecting fusion, or at least Goku and Vegeta to team up. Potentially Goku using Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta using the Ultra Eagle form. But 
it's said it's like Goku and Vegeta are taking turns because, you know, Goku wants to take care of Granola now, but Vegeta won't let him because of his pride. So it's like they're, they're, they're going back and forth and they're not working together the way they should be. But uh, we see Granoa moves quickly to Goku's back, but Goku notices and strengthens his neck. We've seen this before, right? How you can like harden your neck uh, or you can take it's It's like it's a it's a martial arts thing. You know, like you can take like uh, the strength of other parts of your body and apply it to a certain point, right? To make that point stronger. So Goku can see that Granoa is attacking his neck. So he strengthens his neck to make it more difficult. So we see Granoa does hit Goku on the neck, but uh, and sends Goku back into his normal form, and he falls unconscious uh, to the ground. Granoa walks away thinking that Goku is now defeated, but we see that Goku was actually pretending. You know, he he strengthened his neck, and he made Granoa believe that that blow to the neck was enough to take him out. But Goku was just paying uh, possum. So, like I said, you know, Goku, when it comes to martial arts, you know, there's nobody like him. He's a genius. He's a fighting genius. All right, he was actually able to make Granoa believe that uh, he was defeated. But uh, Goku throws a key, bo- uh, a key blast at Granola's back. This angers Granola. So he tries to pierce Goku's abdomen with his right hand. And of course, we know Granola loves going after those vital points. That's been his battle strategy since this fight began back in chapter 72. Uh, and remember, this is like the fifth full chapter of this battle. Chapter 72, chapter 73, where Goku versus Granola. 74 and 75 were Vegeta versus Granola, and now uh, here we are in chapter 76 where it's like Goku and Vegeta not really teaming up, but them taking turns against Granola. So, uh, so now we see, uh, so Granola goes after Goku's abdomen, but Goku uses the same trick as before. So Goku, instead of strengthening his neck this time, he strengthens his abdomen, and uh, so when Granola goes to attack his abdomen, uh, it's able to, you know, Goku, all the strength that both Goku put in that, that certain area is able to suppress the damage that Granola would have done otherwise. So, so Goku's able to stop Granola's attack. Then Goku punches Granola in the stump, in the stomach. And, you know, I, like I said, it's like, I'll say it again. It's interesting because we don't know if Goku's in Ultra Instinct or not. Because remember, Goku was able to land some blows with Super Saiyan Blue when he fought Granola, but he was fighting Granola's clone. Now we know that this is the real Granola, and he's gotten much stronger in the short time since he finished fighting Goku back in Chapter 73. So it's interesting here that it, is, it's, that it seems that Goku in Super Saiyan Blue is still able to kind of hold his own against Granola. Uh, so we see Vegeta wakes up. Uh, and he sees that Goku and Granola are still fighting, right? Uh, so Goku is, you know, doing his best, but Granola kicks him to the ground, and Goku goes back in his normal form. So I'm assuming he's reverting from Super Saiyan Blue back to base, right? He doesn't have enough energy to go full power UI. So Vegeta tells Goku to let him fight his way. Goku accepts and asks him not to die. So... So, hold on, I'm getting a call. All right, I I had to pause the video there for a sec. Uh, But anyway, uh, so what we see here is uh, Vegeta walks past Goku and tells him, uh, you know, he tells Goku, let me fight my way. And Goku accepts this and asks him not to die. Remember that that extra bonus draft page that we got that was in the weekly Dragon Ball news video? That's where this dialogue uh, comes from. So, like I said in my early draft video pages, there's there's a there's a certain amount of time between where the early draft pages end and where we get that bonus draft page uh, between those events. So, so this so where Vegeta tells Goku to let him fight this way, right? When Vegeta and Goku had that small bout of dialogue, and Goku says, "Don't die, Vegeta." So that I'm gonna say that takes place in the middle of the chapter. Of course. So, like I said, there's a little bit of time, you know, uh, between where the early draft pages end and where we get that bonus uh, draft page, which seems to take place in the middle of the chapter. So we see Vegeta. He transfers back into the Ultra Eagle form. So Vegeta can go into that form at will. 
like I said, and I'll say this, it's interesting, you know, because I want to think there has to be another stage here, kind of. I'm, I'm kind of getting the impression that there is another stage of Ultra Ego. Like, there's something beyond this for Vegeta. Because there's no way that, you know, we understand Granola's strong, but there's no way they just gave Vegeta this new form just to, you know, just to lose to Granola a couple times and that be it. You know, I feel like there's a lot of improvement that Vegeta can do with this form. And, you know, once he truly masters his power, he's going to be on an unbelievable level. But, anyway... Uh, we see Granoa is surprised to see that Vegeta still has this much power left, and we see that they're fighting in uh, the Sugarellian city. So we've seen this battle is moving from many different locations, from the forest, right, to the mountains, to the ruins of Granoa's old city, uh, and now it's moving towards the, uh, where the Sugarellians live, right? So Granola tells Vegeta to go elsewhere, but Vegeta ignores him. Because now Granola, it's like, you know, even though Granola wants revenge, he doesn't want to do damage to the actual Sugarellian city. They have nothing to do with this, right? And we know that the Sugarellians, they uh, evacuated the city a couple chapters ago when they saw the earthquakes taking place from Goku and Granola's battle. But still, you know, it's nice to see that Granoa has in, in his mind that he doesn't want to do damage to the city, but Vegeta doesn't really care. So we see Granoa and the Vegeta going at it. Granoa punches Vegeta and Vegeta bites his arm, right? You know, Vegeta, he tends to get a little more violent when he's in the Ultra Eagle form. So we see Granoa slam Vegeta to the ground. Then he steps on his arm so that Vegeta can't move. And he shoots several key blast attacks point break at Vegeta's face. That's going to be a cool panel to see, right? Vegeta getting his ass whooped in that way. Kind of reminds me of when Goku was fighting Jiren in the Tournament of Power. And then uh, Jiren stepped on Goku's back during the battle. And Goku was struggling to get up because of how strong just Jiren standing on his back was. So, Granoa sits on the ground because he ex is exhausted, right? To remember, Granoa's been fighting. And it, it kind of makes sense. Granoa's been fighting nonstop for f basically five chapters. He fought against Goku. Then he fought against Vegeta. He fought against Goku again. And now he's fighting against Vegeta again, right? And it's not like, you know, he, he doesn't have a sense of being. He doesn't have anything to heal himself. But, you know, Goku and Vegeta are giving him trouble just like we expected them to. And, you know, Granola is exhausting. He's just, huh. And remember, Granola also believes that this is only the appetizer, you know, because he believes that Frieza is the final boss here. Even though, unless Frieza has a new form that we don't know about, we know that Goku and Vegeta are way stronger than Frieza is, Okay. Uh, but then we see a wall of a house collapse, and Granoa sees inside a Sugarellian mother with her child. She looks at Granoa terrified. So this is this is a big moment. This is a big moment because remember, Granola told Vegeta that you know uh, I don't want to fight here. You know I don't want to do da any damage to the Sugarellians, right? I don't want to do any damage to their home, their city. They have nothing to do with this. They have nothing to do with this. And then. So a sugar railing mother with her child, and they're looking at Granola terrified because they have no idea what's going on. They just see, like, earthquakes and the, the city shaking, and they're scared. So it, And it looks like, you know, everyone already evacuated before they could leave. So they're terrified right now, which is understandable. So this gives Granola a flashback, right? So we get a flashback, and we see Granola as a child running away from the city that the Saiyan, the Saiyans attacked. And remember... The, we've gotten only slight glimpses of Granoa's home being wrecked by the Saiyans and the Frieza Force. I think that was chapter 68, if I was correct. The way back at the beginning of this arc. Remember, we got those first couple pages, and then we saw it look like Granola was in some type of church. And it we saw a great ape, you know, come in from the ceiling, and it looked like it was uh, Bardock. Remember, keep Bardock in mind, because he's going to come into play here in just a second. But uh, we see that flashback, and 
you know, now Granola, just seeing how terrified the Sugarillions are at their home potentially getting destroyed, Granola is remembering, you know, how it was like for him when the Saiyans attacked and his home was getting destroyed and how scary that was. So we see that Granola does, in fact, enter a church and he meets his mom. So that's going to be a sweet scene. I cannot wait to see what Granola's mother looks like. But uh, we see that Granola and uh, his mom hug but a noise interrupts them, and they look at something terrified. And I'm going to assume, even though we ha don't have the chapter yet, I'm going to assume that's probably a great ape. May be, it may, in fact, be Bardock for all we know. So we go back to the present. Vegeta gets up, and uh, we see G Vegeta gets up. And we see Granola is enraged, and he punches Vegeta, sending Vegeta out of the city. So we see Granola is now ready to finish Vegeta off, right? Granola is pissed off, and he's ready to take out Vegeta for good and end this. And then he, we see he begins to focus his energy into a giant key ball. Key, uh, key, uh, key ball. This may be similar to, similar to the destruction key ball full of Hakai energy that Vegeta made at the end of last chapter. Who knows? But Granola makes a big key blow, uh, key ball, I don't know why I keep, I keep saying that wrong, key ball, uh, and we see that Vegeta is also exhausted, and what's interesting here is, it doesn't say, nothing here says Vegeta using the sensu bean, so maybe that sensu bean was actually destroyed when, uh, Vegeta's armor came falling off, who knows, but, you know, Vegeta is exhausted here, it says nothing about Vegeta taking the sensu bean, you know, so I don't know if he so has it. We don't know if it was destroyed during the battle, but it just says that Vegeta is exhausted. But, you know, even though Vegeta is, is exhausted, he's willing to try and resist the attack. So we see Goku. Goku runs up to them, but he's also exhausted. Remember, they're all tired. They've been fighting now for five straight chapters. You know, Granola is probably more exhausted than anybody because he's been fighting nonstop. But, you know, we, we're seeing here that all three of these two men are very, very exhausted, which is interesting because if we're to assume that part of the final battle of this arc is going to be, you know, potentially, I still have the prediction of that the final battle of this arc is going to be Goku, Granola, and Vegeta teaming up against the Heater Clan. I still believe that's going to be the final battle, right? How do we get there? Who knows? But I think that's going to be the final battle, and... You know, at some point, Goku, Vegeta, and Granola, you know, no matter if they're friends or foes, they're going to have to heal. You know, Goku was able to heal himself to an extent, but he wasn't able to fully heal himself. You know, and they they, they don't have sensu means, they don't have Whis, they don't have Dende, you know, they don't really have anybody to heal them. So, at some point, there's going to have to be a break in the fighting here so that these three can recover and hopefully have a chance against the Heater Clan. But that's just my prediction. But we can see here that Goku, Vegeta, and Granola, they are all absolutely exhausted. So then, uh, as we near the end of the chapter, a spaceship appears at full speed next to Goku. Inside is the Namekian um, uh, Mon Monite, I like to call him Monito, right? So we see Monito there, and the ship is piloted by Granola's robot, or, or AI, Oatmeal. Remember last chapter where uh, Granoa told uh, Omeo, I don't need you anymore, when he threw off uh, the headset, right? And then we saw that Omeo, you know, took Granoa's ship and then took the headset back onto the ship and flew away. A lot of people were coming up with predictions that, you know, either he's going to run into the Heater Clan or he's going to run into Monito, something like that. So it is confirmed here that uh, when, Gr when Oatmeal left the battlefield, right, he went to pick up uh, Monito, and I'm guessing here that Omeo is hoping that Monito can talk some sense into Granola, right, because Granola has been blinded by revenge, you know, since this battle began, so uh, we see Goku tries to stop Granola's giant key blast, right, but he can't, him and Vegeta, you know, they just don't have the energy anymore, so we see Monito opens the spaceship and calls out to Granola, and Granola is surprised to see Monito on the battlefield. We see that Goku attacks Granola and stops his attack. So I'm, I guess I'm, 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 this is my prediction. I'm assuming that the hesitation that Granola had when he saw Monito on the battlefield, that surprise that it gave him, I'm going to assume that that was what Goku needed, that brief instant, 
right, of distraction was what Goku needed to, you know, uh, deflect the attack. So we see then that the ship lands and Monito gets out of it. And then the chapter ends with Monito saying, 40 years ago, the one who saved us was a Saiyan called Bardock. Holy shit. Wow. That's a, and remember, when we got the early draft pages, they said there was going to be a huge revelation that would come to light uh, in this chapter. And we've heard Toriyama and Torotaro, they both said there was going to be huge revelations, huge secrets of the past of Dragon Ball revealed in this arc. This may be the biggest one. This may be the biggest one so far. So, it was Bardock who saved Granola and Monito 40 years ago. Holy moly. So, I would not be surprised if the first part for Dragon Ball Super Mario Chapter 77 is Monito explaining what happened, how Granola survived. Because that's been the question I've had this entire arc. Since Chapter 68, where we got those pages and we saw Bardock uh, as a great ape looking inside that church where Granola was, I've been wondering, like... How did Granola? How did Granola survive? What happened? And I, I knew that Bardock had to have some kind of role, but I didn't know it was like this big a role. This is huge. This is huge, right? So there's a lot to talk about, and I'm probably gonna make a bonus video on this, but I'm gonna probably wait till after we have the full uh, chapter, cause there's a lot to talk about here. But the fact that Bardock was the one who to save Granola. All those years ago, that's huge. That makes Granola's connection to Goku much bigger. This this is huge for Goku because Goku could finally be learning a little bit about his father. And this is something me personally, I've been wanting for Dragon Ball for such a long time. Such a long time. I said this. You guys remember back when the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie was coming out. And we got all that news about Bardock and Gine being in the movie. I kept saying how... I would love for someday Goku to learn about his parents and then maybe meet with them somehow. Like, it's Dragon Ball. Anything could happen. So the fact that we're finally getting something, something Goku's going to learn about his father a little bit, it, that, that's great. That's, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen with all the dialogue. I don't know if Monito is going to have like some kind of photo of Bardock to show to Goku. I don't know. Like, we have no idea. This is just the end of the chapter. It's the big cliffhanger. It's a big revelation, and it's also a huge cliffhanger, right? But there's a lot. There's a lot to talk about with this, and it's very exciting. I know some people are not going to be happy about this because there's a lot of people that don't like Bardock from Dragon Ball Minus and how they kind of turned him into, you know, a good guy when the Bardock from the Bardock special wasn't really a good guy, but he, he was more of an anti-hero. But it's, it's almost like here, the, you know, with the, the Broly movie and Dragon Ball Minus and now this new revelation, right? It's like, wow, wow. You know, Bardock's actually a really good guy. The fact that he saved Granola, you know, uh, he, you know, he saved Granola when his duty was supposed to be to kill everybody on Planet Serio because they were supposed to, you know, take that, you know, that take that planet over for Frieza. That's huge. That's huge. You know, so I know some people aren't gonna like it. I'm I don't hate Dragon Ball Minus, you know. I'm 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 in the minority of people that actually like Dragon Ball Minus. Do I like how similar it is to Superman's backstory? No. But thing on this, I don't mind Dragon Ball Minus at all. I love Bardock and Gine. And I'm glad that we're finally getting to see Goku get some kind of, you know, kind of learning about his parents. Yeah, because Goku, we all know his story. He fell on his head. He forgot his memory. He doesn't remember his parents. He doesn't remember anything, you know, before meeting a, uh, uh, before meeting Grandpa Gohan. But still, man, this is exciting to me. I, I'm very excited uh, to learn where they go with this. Uh, but you know, the fact that Bardock was the one who saved Granola all those years ago—that is huge. Yeah, that, that is huge. When it comes to the history of Dragon Ball, you know, because this is canon. And I know some people don't like that word, but this is canon, guys. And wow, they're like, there's going to be so much to talk about 
uh, coming out of this chapter. And I cannot wait to discuss it all with you, and I cannot wait to have the full, uh, the full sport, uh, the full panels and everything. But man, oh man, this gets me so excited! Like, imagine the last page of this chapter is just a picture of Bardock. You know, that is gonna get me so so hyped. If that's true, but either way. Uh, we'll we'll just have to wait and see. But still, man, this is this is great. This is great. In my opinion, I am so excited now for this chapter and to see where they go with the story. This could be very very big. In you know maybe Granola finally, finally you know getting over, you know this hatred of the Saiyans that he's had. But we'll have to wait and see. We still have a long way to go. But this is big. This is big, man. Bardock is back. You know and wow. He saved Granola 40 years ago. That is that is exciting. But other than that, guys, that's about all I got for you guys today. You know, uh, just want to take some time and, you know, just relax with you guys and talk about these uh, these new spoilers. Shout out to DBS Chronicles on Twitter. Thank you uh, to him for bringing this to us. But other than that, that's about all I got for you guys today. Like I said, make sure you guys have notifications enabled because as soon as we get, you know, spoiler images and all that good stuff, I will be making videos letting you guys know what is going on. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I ask uh, that you guys please like the video. It helps me out a ton. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, right? Uh, enable notifications by kicking the bell next to my name, Fitzmunk TV, so you guys are notified every time I post a new video. Follow me down on social media. The links are in the are in the description down below. Man, oh man, what a big, what a big revelation. But uh, I'll see you guys later, man. We'll have the full chapter next week. So we'll have our, our review and reaction like we always do. But I'll see you guys later. Until next time, peace.